Some people have come forward and said very well, the words of Ziyaratul Nahya are outstanding. They are mesmerizing. They're brilliant. They're soothing for the soul. It's a Ziyarah of Wilaya. It's a Ziyarah of establishment and connection with Ali Muhammad. But there are problems with it. And we have people who from time to time come out and place doubts in the minds of others regarding Ziyaras. Don't listen to people who just come out and say, don't recite Ziyarat Ashura. Don't necessarily just go with anything that is being said out there. Investigate, research, ask the ulama. There are many clips on YouTube. There are many individuals who claim things. But the school of Ali Muhammad is a school of what? Of research, of intellectual reasoning, of evidence. Yes? So, when it comes to Ziyaratul Nahiyya al muqaddasa there are a number of objections that have been presented. I wish to quickly go through them because some of them deserve to be analyzed, deserve to be answered. Number one, they say it's weak in narration, in authenticity. It's sanadun ba'if. We cannot take it because it's weak. Why? This ziyara is from whom? It is mentioned by Shaykh Al-Mufid in his book Al-Mazar. He said, I received it from one of the four representatives of the holy Imam. Who else mentions it? There is a man by the name of Ibn Al-Mashhadi. He has a book known as Al-Mazar Al-Kabir. This Mazar Al-Kabir is the main source in which Ziyarat al nahiyya al muqaddasa is found. Now, this Ibn al-Mashhadi who died in the year 610 after Hijrah does not mention the chain by which he received this particular ziyara. However, what does he say? He says, those who I received it from and the chain is thuqat in his words, in his conviction, they are authentic, they are reliable. These individuals that I received the ziyara from, number one. Number two, when you look at our ulama, for example, not only Sheikh Al-Mufid, for example, a Sheikh Al-Murtaba, Alam Al-Huda, Allah Ta'ala Maqama, he also narrates this. At the same time, it's, it was one of his most recited and favorite ziyaras. He's one of our great scholars. Similarly, Sayyid Al-Amin in Ayan Al-Shia, you have other scholars, yes, Ibn Tawus, he has come forward and he has placed it also, this ziyara. How do we deal with this notion of that there is a weakness in the chain of narration? Well, ulama, they come forward and say, there is a concept, there is a principle known as qa'idatu tasamuh fi adillati sunan. Meaning what? It means when there are acts of worship that gets us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, somehow if there is a weakness in narration, it is overlooked. Why? Because we perform it raja'ul matrubiyya. We do it in the hope of it being accepted. And we have narrations that says, anyone who does a deed for the sake of Allah, thinking that they'll get thawab for it, and it's a good deed. And it was not something that is thabit. It wasn't something that was actually established. Later it is found. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the reward of that deed. Allah wa ta'ala كتب الله له ذلك الثواب yes. So our ulama have come forward and said even if you have somehow doubted the chain of narrations and the authenticity of the ziyara you recited raja'ul matlubiyya in the hope that it is accepted and when you look at the words of the ziyara when you look at the expressions of the ziyara when you look at the themes of the ziyara it matches the other ziyaras of the Ahl al-Bayt it does not in any shape or form contradict the Qur'an or the teachings of Ali Muhammad. That's number one. Number two, someone comes forward and says, hold on, fair enough, I will recite the ziyara. But some of the parts of the ziyara I have question marks over. We say to them, like what? They say, for example, there is a part of the ziyara that says, As-salamu ala man tawalla dafnahu ahlul qura. Peace be upon the one whom the villages buried him. Then I know that we believe, according to the most established narrations, that the holy the fourth Imam, Imam Zayn al-Abideen al-Sajjad, peace and blessings be upon him, is the one who buried 
Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam. Yes? I mean, the idea that evidence exists from Imam al-Ridha alayhi salam when he would have debates with those who are waqifis, and he would have debates with them because they would say, how do we know that you are the Imam? Because you should have prayed over the body of Imam al kazim Yes? Imam al ridha alayhi salam would say, who, bear, who prayed on the body of Imam al Hussein? They said, Imam al sajjad Because their objection was, how can you get to Baghdad? You, Ali ibn Musa, claim that you prayed over the body of your father in Baghdad. He died, he was killed in Baghdad. How can you go from Medina to Baghdad? He asked them the same question. How did Imam Zayn al Abidin go from Kufa to Karbala? Yes. And so he would give them this proof because the belief is that the Imam would pray over the body of the Imam who's deceased and actually bury him. Yes. But here in the Ziyara says, Peace be upon the one who is buried by the villagers. How do we respond to this? Well, the people of Usul, yes. when it comes to this, they say the following. They say, if I say Ali came to the mosque and say Muhammad came to the mosque, this doesn't mean either Ali or Muhammad came to the mosque. It could mean both of them came to the mosque. Yes? So when the Ziyara says that the villages buried you, that means they took part, they helped out, they were there to assist in the burial. Which of course they were. Bani Asad, they were there. They were assisting Imam Zain al Abidin, peace and blessings be upon him. Then there is another part of the ziyara which has raged must ideas and objections. Please pay attention to this one. What does this part say? When the women saw your horse return back without you, Barazna min al Khudur. They came out from the tents. Na shiratu shu'ur. They took out their hair. Ala al khududi la timat. They slapped their cheeks. So, some people come forward and ask the question How is this suitable? How can we explain this? That the women of Ahl al Bayt take off their hijab in expression of anguish, in the expression of grief. Is this acceptable? Can we really believe? that they would go through mourning in such a way? How do we respond? There are four ways to understand this. Please pay attention to this. In case anyone comes out and discourages you from reading and connecting with the 12th Imam and the third Imam through Ziyarat al-Nahya. First of all, it is likely that they took out their hair inside the tents. In other words, the tents were larger. They were inside the tents. They took out their hair in expression of grief as it was a practice amongst Arabian women at that time. Another possibility is that they were between tents. Nobody is able to see them. Nobody was able to see that they were without hijab. A third possibility, which is weaker, is that they were not women of the Ahl al-Bayt. There were other women who were there, came out in such a state and grieved. But the fourth is very interesting. In Arabic, you see, the part in the ziyara says what? Says, Nashirat al-Shu'ur. See, Shu'ur has been translated as hair, yes? But the plural of hair is not shu'ur, yes? Shu'ur in Arabic is feelings. When somebody say, ana ash'ur, I feel. So when the ziyara says, na shiratu shu'ur means they express their feelings. They were in the state of pain, in the state of suffering and anguish and indeed sorrow. That's why when you look at this particular ziyara, it brings forth the notion of the connection between Imam Sahib al-Asri wa-Zaman, Ajjarallahu ta'ala farajah, and Imam al Hussein al-Shaheed, peace and blessings be upon them.